Hello, this is Daniel Raymond, the voice behind Ray's Guide. Well, we've had our first weekend in the Tech Review channel of the replication layer separation, and I would like to share my experiences on it, but more than that, I'd like to share some how-to information about analyzing performance information in general that you can use yourself when analyzing the performance in the game in 3.22. So to start with my own experience, which on Friday through Sunday was pretty miserable. I simply could not get in for more than a few seconds without major problems. Yeah, it was a train wreck. And by that I mean, literally, trains were wrecking. Then late on Sunday, when the official testing was over, I got on and literally enjoyed hours of uninterrupted game time. Smooth frame rates, good server rates, and reasonably smart AIs. It was like a Dickensian novel titled The Tale of Two Servers. It was the best of frame rates. It was the worst of frame rates. But what do I draw from that about the state of the replication layer right now? Well, the conclusion that I draw is that it has very few bugs, but no small amount of problems with optimization and capacity tuning. You see a bug, such as a misplaced pointer or whatever, will break every time the execution of the code reaches it. That may happen more often under greater load, but it will happen and will happen just as bad under light load. Capacity problems, however, only show up under load when backlogs in queue and timing issues happen because things are taking too long. And that can have all sorts of weird problems because information such as which direction the train is pointing or whether this elevator has a floor is lost. In some respects, bugs are the easier of the two. You find them, you fix them, and they generally stay fixed. Capacity and tuning issues, however, just allow you to increase the limits until you run into the next one, and if you are unable to break through that, well, you just have to leave that as the limit. So, since it has been a while since I last covered the subject, and there are now new metrics provided, it is time to go over the telemetry the game can provide you if you want to understand more about what is happening. To start with, you need to toggle what is called console mode. This is done with a tilde key. The command that you type in is r underscore display info equals, followed by a number from 0 to 4. 0 turns off the display, the others activate certain levels of information. The most commonly used are values are either 2 or 3. Then of course, you use the tilde key again to hide the console mode. So let's look at the metrics you are provided. The first line is the frame rate. The first number is the frames per second. The second is the range of frames within the last second. And the last is the milliseconds per frame, which is simply 1,000 divided by the first number. Or conversely, 1,000 divided by this number is the frame rate. So what most people don't get is that from the standpoint of how smooth your video is, the most important number on this line is this one, the lower boundary of the frames per second. Because your eyes will perceive anything at or greater than 30 frames per second as smooth. Pretty much every movie or television program that you have ever seen was displayed at 30 frames per second. But with movies or television, it is an absolutely consistent 30 frames per second. Never more, and most importantly, never less. A game playing at an average of 30 frames per second seems less smooth than the movie and less smooth than the game playing at 60 frames per second because the 30 frames per second game has more frames playing at less than 30 than the game playing at 60 frames per second, which might have very few or none. And the television show will have none. But if the game averaging 60 frames per second is erratic and is achieving that average of six by having most of the frames at 90 per second, but several frames each second playing in the teens, the game will appear jerky because all frames less than 30 are perceptible as stutters. The next line is your session ID. This is unique to your session and is how the server and the replication layer will be distinguishing between you and every other player running on the game right now. The next line is your shard ID. This is the identifier of the server, someday the server mesh, and replication layer that you are talking to. This is worth breaking down. The first field is the instance, such as live, PTU, EPTU, etc. Note that even though this is the preview channel, it shows PTU. Then is the region, in this case US East 1B, which is the AWS data center that the North American region is hosted on. I'm not sure of the significance of the word split, but the following number is the patch number of the software release, and then a three digit number for the actual shard number in that data center. So if somebody asks what shard you're on, in this case the answer would be US 10. 
Turning to the next line, this represents the percentage of frames at or above certain levels. I believe that they are in groups of 10, so there's the number of frames above 10 frames per second, above 20 frames per second, above 30 frames per second, above 40 frames per second, and above 50 frames per second, and above 60 frames per second. Now, as I pointed out earlier, the actually important figures for smoothness is having the first three numbers be at or as close to 100 as possible because the real perception of choppiness comes from the occasional frame coming in below 30, not from the difference between the frames arriving at 50 a second and the frames arriving at 60 a second. Now the next line might be a bit confusing because it says server meshing is enabled, yes, but I thought we were only testing the replication layer. These metrics are coming from your client, not from the data center. And from your computer standpoint, it is getting entity data from one service, the replication layer, and getting the simulation data from another place, the game server. And well, from your client computer standpoint, that's server meshing. Whether there is one game server or multiple ones in the data center, well, that's data center issues. So perhaps server meshing enabled might have been better read server meshing capable or server meshing ready. The next line is server recovery reports. And since, and since server recovery is currently not happening, this will always be zero. But in the future, this will represent the number of 30K crashes that didn't happen. Next up is the server time. This is the current time in UTC or universal time coordinates, also generally known as Greenwich Mean Time. Interestingly, before you connect to the data center itself, this will show as January 1st, 1970, which in Unix systems is how the number zero converts to a date. Then comes the server FPS, which is a bit of a misnomer since the server is not drawing frames onto a device. Rather, it refers to how often the game server sends you a batch of new results on events, whether someone has moved, whether your shot hit them, whether their shot hit you, etc. Just like with frame rate, divide 1000 by this number to get the number of milliseconds each server update takes. In general, this number is regarded to need to be in the teens to get any sort of a sense of responsiveness and to have the AI not to be incapacitated from their requests for action being piled up in a backlog. Which brings us to the next line, the network ping. This is the round trip time for an internet packet to make it from your computer to the entry router of the data center and then back to you. And frankly, this is a number you can't really do much of anything about. It represents the distance between you and the AWS data center where the shard is times the speed of light or electricity depending on the media. Buying a more expensive data connection will up your available bandwidth, but it would be unlikely to change your ping at all. But add the milliseconds of the server frame rate to the ping and you have the total time for the action you just took to reach the game server, be adjudicated, and then the results return to you. And that's why you can have an excellent video frame rate and still feel like the game is laggy and unresponsive. On the other hand, just because the ping isn't something that you can change doesn't mean that it's unimportant. If you see the ping increasing, or even worse, the loss percentage change from zero, then your internet connection is going bad, or maybe the internet as a whole in your area. The next line is BW in and BW out, which is short for bandwidth in and bandwidth out. Now in previous releases, these, particularly BW in, going to zero meant the server was dead. Now it is unclear whether the BW in represents just the input from the game server or whether it is both the game server and the replication layer. If so, then in this environment, the game server could go dead and you will still see some BW in from the replication layer. So I'd suggest using the frame rate as the more reliable indication of whether the game server is going on you. Although with recovery, that won't be what it once was. Three lines down are where the system thinks you are at, which may come more into play when we actually get static and dynamic server meshing, and then the mission type that it believes that you are on. In the final two lines, the most significant line is the number of entities, which is likely directly related to the frame rate. Also, particularly during the loading, if this number freezes for a long time, you may be hung in the loading process. So that's my overview of what telemetry you can get as a user in 3.22 and how you can interpret it. So finally, an update on our giveaways. As of recording, we are at 89% of our subscriber goal and 79% of our membership goal to give one lucky winner the Zippy Zazzy Zaftig Zephyr Zeus 2. And then looking further ahead, we're at 59% of the membership and 67% of the subscriber goal for that great multi-role multiplayer mining meta, the Arasta. One entry per video, just be a member and be entered automatically. 
or subscribe and comment, somehow including the secret word. And the secret word for this video is the kind of wreck the tech preview was for me early on. Fly safe, keep it real, and I'll see you in the verse. This is Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.